is a case where a female presented with fever, chill and rigor, with confusion, anxiety or difficulty in breathing are the manifestations. So the body temperature is raised, heart rate is raised, respiratory rate is raised. So what do you think? Urine output also was decreased. So what is the clinical diagnosis? Yes. So the clinical diagnosis here depends upon the manifestations. So the three important manifestations here are raised body temperature. Okay. Raised respiratory rate. Urine output decreased. Patient is presented with fever. So all this are together are put into the probable clinical diagnosis into sepsis. So this is uh, probably a case of sepsis. Uh, the detailed uh, diagnostic criteria what is used for establishing a diagnosis of sepsis we will discuss uh, subsequently. Just keep the uh, scenario into your mind. So uh, sepsis is uh, nothing but it is a type of blastim infection. So this is the case scenario uh, with which we will start our today's session. It is about blastim infection. The learning objectives of this particular session are we will discuss the various etiological agents and types of blastim infections. We will discuss the clinical manifestations, laboratory diagnosis and treatment of blastim infection. Sepsis is a type of blastim infection which we will be discussing. Then we will summarize the importance of fever of unknown origin and anemia. So uh, let us start. What do you mean by bloodstream infection? It refers to presence of microorganisms in blood. So you know that blood is the element which goes into every organ. Every organ is been supplied by blood vessel. Blood runs into every organ. So if you have organisms present in blood that may have serious consequences. Presence of organism in blood may have serious consequences. It can lead to shock, hypovolemic shock and various organ maybe uh, will be affected so multi organ failure can take place okay disseminated intravascular uh, coagulation also can be a complication which may take place uh, following blastim infection so uh, remember uh, blastim infections uh, represent a group of infections which are extremely serious that has to be dealt uh, meticulously Otherwise, it leads to its own consequences. So, coming to the terminologies, there are two important terminologies what you need to uh, remember. One is bacteremia. Other one is septicemia. Bacteremia means presence of bacteria in blood. without any multiplication. The bacteria does not um, uh, uh, multiply. It is only present in blood. So that is a less serious uh, condition. If the organism start multiplying and will start producing toxins, this condition is called as septicemia. Uh, septicemia means the presence of organism followed by its multiplication and production of toxin that lead to serious consequences. Okay. So uh, one more thing I want to tell you that don't think that blastim infection is only mediated by bacteria. There are viruses, there are parasites, there are uh, fungi. They also can invade the bloodstream. Accordingly, they are called as viremia. A presence of a presence of virus in blood, fungemia, a presence of fungus in blood, and parasitemia. Okay, a presence of uh, parasites in blood. So the subsequent discussion we will confine to 
bacteremia we'll start with what are the variety of uh, bacteremia so uh, what are the various type of uh, bacteremia the first type is transient bacteremia the here the organism appears in blood transiently transiently means for some particular uh, time which may occur either spontaneously naturally or it may occur uh, following minor traumatic events which may be even brushing tooth brushing okay chewing of food chewing of hard food or it may happen uh, following instrumentation instrumentation especially at the mucosal sites skin or mucosal site if any instrumentation will take place that may lead to uh, invasion of the organism from the skin or mucosa into the blood so this is called as transient bacteremia usually the transient bacteremia will not be a problem the organisms are usually removed from the blood from time to time by various immune mechanisms the second type is continuous uh, bacteremia and intermittent uh, bacteremia in continuous uh, bacteremia there is a constant flow of organism constant passes of microorganism into the blood stream it usually happens when there is a constant source of infection inside the blood vessels so either inside the heart like intravascular infections intravascular infections inside the blood vessels for, for example the uh, previous session we have discussed crbsi a uh, catheter related blood stream infection or inside heart uh, for example endocarditis these are the various uh, situations which may lead to continuous uh, bacteremia there will be continuous a passage of organism into the blood stream the third variety is intermittent uh, bacteremia in intermittent uh, bacteremia the organism spills over to the blood only intermittently the classical example is if you have an undrained abscess if you have any undrained abscess then what happens is from the abscess the organism will spill over to the blood at a constant rate so you will have intermittently the organisms may be present in the in the blood stream intermittent bacteremia may also uh, uh, take place in the early course of various infections uh, such as meningitis pneumonia okay early course of osteomyelitis so early course of various infections you may have intermittent uh, bacteremia where the organism will come to blood only intermittently okay so now we will discuss uh, what are the etiological agents of blood stream infection as i told you that blood stream infections are not only confined to bacteria there are viruses there are parasites as well as there are fungi any of this a group of etiological agents can cause blood stream infection so we'll start with uh, what are the bacterial agents the bacterial agents that can cause blood stream infection are broadly classified into those which can cause primary blood stream infection that is the agents primarily they appear in blood primarily they appear in blood the various common examples include the agents of enteric fever that is salmonella brucellosis caused by a brucella leptospira okay and borrelia borrelia leptospira are example of spirochetes they are spirally coiled bacteria okay rickettsia rickettsia and the related uh, genera they also infect especially the endothelium 
endothelial cells they infect the vascular endothelium uh, or rickets yeah. primary bloodstream infection can also be caused by those organisms that can cause infective endocarditis uh, such as your hasek group of organism streptococcus viridens so these are the various group of organisms that cause primary bloodstream infection these bacterial agents are discussed in the subsequent sessions under bloodstream infection however bloodstream infection can also be caused by other group of bacterial agents that cause secondary bloodstream infection the reason is they usually infect the primary site they infect the primary body site uh, some of the organisms infect lungs some organisms infect gi etc and from there they spill over to blood and this is the reason why we discuss this organisms under the respective system where they cause primary bloodstream infection there are various organisms which can invade the bloodstream right from staphylococcus aureus from beta hemolytic streptococcus so all these are gram positives okay so i will now list you the various organisms that can cause a secondary bloodstream infection gram positive cocci like uh, staphylococcus beta hemolytic streptococcus your pneumococcus okay streptococcus viridens streptococcus aureus also can cause a, a, a secondary bsi enterococcus so all these are the gram positive cocci that can invade the bloodstream <laughs>